Hi everybody, Stampin' Sue Creates here. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'd like to welcome any of my new subscribers. So if you are not yet a subscriber, please click the little red subscribe box. I really would appreciate that. If you are returning, then um, thanks so much for coming back. Now to subscribe, it's absolutely free and there's not many things these days that are free. So many of you know that I do um, Stampin' Up! demonstrations, I do unboxings, um, I do some sewing. Um, I'm also into machine embroidery, but if you watch my previous video, you'll know that my embroidery machine is down for the count, which I'm kind of upset. And I have an upcoming craft show at the end of November. So um, I'm a little disappointed because I can't take the machine into the shop until like a month from now. By the time I get it back, well, you know, there's not much time. It gets to be busy holiday time. And maybe you're like me. Oh, let me put this other light on. And maybe you don't have... What's going on? Maybe you don't have a whole lot of time either. But you want to make some fun holiday gifts. Well, let me show you something quick and simple. Um, I think pretty much anybody could do it, any skill at all. Um, I did ask on the last video what it is you'd like to see, and someone requested the bowl cozies. So let me move this out of the way for just a minute to show you. So if you're wondering, what, what is a bowl cozy? Well, this is one of my, um, this is a false craft bowl, and it's a pretty, pretty large bowl. I don't know what's on there. <laughs> My grandson was using it. Um, anyhow, um, it's a nice size bowl. Nice ice cream bowl, what I call. So in the past, um, this is what a bowl cozy is. Let's see if you could see that. There you go. So it's basically a square of fabric with some batting between and a little bit of sewing. So what you do is you would heat up your soup or whatever it is you want to heat up in the microwave in the bowl. Now, I do not recommend microwaving these. <coughs> Excuse me. I know a lot of people do. And I'm going to explain that in just a little bit. Um, but this was the size that I used to make. And I think this is about, oh, maybe eight and a half inches or so. Uh, maybe nine. Maybe nine, I want to say. I don't even recall. I made these last year. Gave a lot of them as Christmas gifts. And everybody loved them. So you can see, um, you would heat up your item or maybe you're having a bowl of um, cereal or maybe a bowl of ice cream and you know how the bowl either gets too hot you know depending in the microwave or even if you just pour in soup that you had boiled on the stove whatever it may be the bowl gets hot or cold depending on what you're making so the bowl cozy is actually you would take your bowl and you would put it into this little piece this little square of fabric and um, it makes like a nice little nest so then you can go ahead and carry your bowl to wherever to the table. Or maybe if you're like me, you like to sit and, you know, have some ice cream in front of the TV or watch your favorite YouTuber. Hello, Step and Sue Creates. Um, you can take this to your spot and you don't have to worry about your hand getting frozen or getting burnt. So I thought this was a great idea. I know they were all the rage and I think they still are all the rage. And it only takes some batting and two pieces of fabric. Super simple to do. So I was watching Dina on her channel and she was making the bowl cozies. And instead of this size, she said her bowls were pretty large too. So she went up to the 12 by 12 size. And you could see, see they're reversible. So um, you can use two different types of fabrics or the same fabric. So she did hers at 11 by 11. And here's my bowl. And this fits so much better. Now you can make them any size you'd like. You know, if you have huge serving bowls and you want to fancy up your table, you can do that. It's totally up to you. But I really like this 11 by 11 size. So um, I got some fabric together in my downtime from machine embroidery. So I thought this is perfect for the guys or maybe the girls in your life, they like camouflage. So I had some of this fun fabric. This was from Creative Notions Quilt Shop. So check them out online. I do unboxings of their subscription box. So I love this fabric that was in one of their boxes. So um, I ordered some more. So look at how cute that is. Now maybe you are into farm animals or cows. Look at this cute fabric. Got this through Etsy. You can get your fabric wherever. I use 100% um, cotton. And here is another one for all those that like the chicken motif. 
cute little bowl. And again, I use the same fabric on both sides. Totally reversible, whatever you choose to do. So they also um, nest together so they don't take up a whole lot of room in your kitchen. Now let me explain a little bit. Let me move these out of the way. A little bit about as far as microwaving. If you are 100% that you want to put your bowl in the cozy and put the entire thing in the microwave, first off, make sure your bowl is microwave safe. And next off, you want to make sure everything you are using is 100% cotton. No filatives, no polyester thread. I mean, you really have to be a stickler for that because you can literally catch it on fire in the microwave. And I've seen horror stories with that. So mine that I'm going to make, I am just not sure if it all is. You know, sometimes you can't really be sure about the fabric if, you know, it may say on it, just like your um, uh, batting may say, but in the fine print, it may say it's mixed with something. But if you are, you definitely want to use it in the microwave, they have something, just check for um, online, microwavable batting. So here is one that I picked up um, through Amazon. I buy most of my stuff through Amazon. Um, fabric usually through Etsy. Um, the fabric I'm going to show you, though, that is so cute. I got it online through Hobby Lobby. So this one is, um, can you, I'm not even going to attempt to say the name. Um, and this is Foam Fiber Interfacing and Crafts 100% Organic Cotton Batting. And this one is called Rapid Wrap. Makes the perfect microwavable bag for potatoes, corn, and other vegetables. Um, and this is made in the USA, which, you know, I'm all about that. Um, and then here on the back, they give you um, instructions for making a microwave bag that you can put your potatoes, corn, and vegetables in. So how fun is that? So um, definitely here, right on the bottom, it tells you there have been some reports of microwave fires when people fail to use materials other than 100% cotton. So there you go. I mean, unless you want to take a chance, I know I don't. I don't want to be looking for another house when my house catches on fire. So if you want to use them in the microwave, you're at your own risk. I'm going to tell anyone that purchases them from me at the craft show, do not microwave. But if you use 100% batting, 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton thread, that's the only way um, you'll get away with it. But I just don't want to chance it. Um, so the batting I'm using, and again, got this through Amazon. I love the uh, warm and natural cotton batting. Now again, this says cotton, but if you look in the fine print, it's not 100% cotton. So I use this for my embroidery projects. Um, anywhere where I need batting, I like the warm and natural. So there you go, right? Use your own discretion. All right. So ahead of time, what I did, look at this fabric. Is this not the cutest fabric ever? I got it online through Hobby Lobby. It was on sale. They didn't have a whole lot of Christmas fabric. I got this and I got some plaids because I want to make uh, dog bandanas. And I want to embroider on them. So I don't know if that's going to happen. So anyhow, I did my squares at 11 by 11. So you're going to need two of them. And let us let me just show you some of the other um, on the fabric. Look at that cute little camper the little trucks the wagons super cute so you need two of those okay and I do an assembly line when I'm doing my crafting I don't know if you guys do as well but I cut a whole bunch of the batting so here's the batting and you need two pieces of that so I just cut a whole bunch and I'm ready to go so what you want to do is um, I don't pin mine if you want to pin it if you want to mark corner to corner you know with a ruler you can do that I don't I mean they're just bowl cozies now when I cut my batting I cut the batting at 10 and a half inches because I'm going to have to put these together and turn them and I don't want all that excess batting you know being uh, all the way um, to each end piece so I'm going to take my batting here 
me see if you can see that. Well, hold it up if you can't. The camera won't go down any further. So I'm just going to fill it in the square on the back. Then let me pull my machine back in. So um, this is a machine that I was talking to you about the other day. Let me find my foot pedal. It sometimes gets lost underneath the uh, desk. Does that happen to you guys? Um, this machine, I want to say, is I'm going to sew it on this side. You can sew it on either side. Whoops. Oh, gosh, you guys have fallen. I'm sorry. Um, you could sew it on either side. I like to put the batting up way. So then, like, the bottom underneath. And I'm putting the um, right sides down at the bottom because you want to put the batting on the wrong side of the fabric. And you're going to stitch corner to corner. Okay, basically, that's pretty much what you're going to do. Let me get my foot pedal situated here. Okay, getting a good, easy spot. So this is a New Home Memory Craft 7000 machine. Let me go ahead and get started. All right. I don't know what that squeaky is. I mean, the machine I've had, I want to say I have had this machine for like 30 years. And I'm going to knock on wood when I say this, but um, I didn't want to knock too loud because then my dog will start barking. But never had this machine in for service I've never had it cleaned I mean I like to take care of the machine I you know tend to clean it out I'm gonna take my other piece now I'm gonna put my batting on here and I never oh, oh I'm sorry I never have a problem um, with this machine that's why my new home embroidery machine that was just purchased in February I cannot believe already there's something wrong with it so um, I'm going to do an updated video because I spoke to brother and um, they're supposed to be calling me back on Monday. I'm going to speak to someone else about it because I'm really disappointed. Okay, so I'm going to take my other piece. Just checking the edge here. I'm going to sew corner to corner. And yes, I could have done all this ahead of time so you don't have to watch me. But um, I want you to see the whole process from start to end. So um, you may want to put it on pause and run to the bathroom, get yourself a drink or something and cozy in because you're going to stick with me through the whole thing while I create this fun bowl cozy. So um, it's Saturday. Um, today is the 26th of September. And I woke up this morning not feeling so well. I'm going to do my next um, corner to quarter stitch. Not feeling so well with a headache. I think it has something to do with the bar barometric pressure. I don't know if any of you guys experienced that as well. But I have sinus problems. And um, whenever the weather tends to change, it's usually when I notice I have issues regarding this. So you can see, look how simple this is to do. Again, do it assembly line fashion. Have everything pre-cut, ready to go. Do this whole step first and then, um, you know, you can move on to the next. Oh, I should trim that with my little scissors. Okay. All right, I'm going to push my machine out of the way. So here we have, where was that with those strings? And, um, Yes, it would be nice to have a new sewing machine, but um, one that like cuts the thread. I mean, they make all fancy schmancy ones. This is an electronic machine, and it does. It is an embroidery machine too. Um, it has embroidery machine um, stitches built in, and um, great machine. Love it. Um, but I want to say that the embroidery stitches that it does is sort of like caveman quality, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it's a great machine. Okay, so here we go. Um, so we have our two pieces with our X's, right? So what you want to do is we're going to fold it right sides together. And we want to have the two of them together. You can choose to pin it or clip it if you want. But no worries. All right, put you up here. So I have some pins. Um, this was in one of the Creative Notion subscription box gifts. And I love this little thing. It's magnetic, so you can throw your pins in there. Or if you're um, doing stamping and you work with um, the 
the um oh gosh i can't think of the name of the things the metal dies it's a great thing to use for that a lot of things if you're doing some home home um improvements and you have like little screws and things you know it holds everything really well okay so moving on i have a little um grid here that it's you know five and um five and a half i guess it is i don't know um, i got it because i like the small size what you want to do is you're going to fold this together and you're going to mark on your batting you want to go over one inch and down two inches so you're going to mark one inch here and two inches here and this also i got in one of my subscription bags i mean i'm telling you if you're not a subscriber yet to creative notion subscription bags you definitely want to check it out so this is one of those friction pens and i'll show you where you at can you see that it's a friction pen and it comes out when you iron it you know so the heat of the iron will bring it out all right so here's what i'm going to do you guys see here I'm going to take my ruler here and I want to mark one inch from there and I'm going to slide my ruler up and mark two inches here and I'm going to put a pin in there and then I will show you just putting the pin to hold it because I want to do all the markings so then you would do all of your markings so see here to here what you can do you can go ahead and take your ruler and draw a diagonal line because that's how we're going to stitch it so now we want to take it and um, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to align up my corners and I'm going to do the same exact thing. Okay, one inch over and I'm doing one inch from the top. So, you know, you may have to mark your fabric, but again, this is a friction pen. And, um, and I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. As you're doing these, you may even be able to um, prejudge you know where it should go I mean it does it does not have to be exact but about I went, a little, I went over a little too much let me make that line a little longer so I can see okay so we have those then we're going to open it up and we're going to fold it the other way and we're going to do the same exact thing okay one inch from the on the top and then two inches coming down and put a pin so let me know in the comments, are you working on any, <clears throat> excuse me, any upcoming holiday gifts? I mean, I know it's the end of September, but I'll tell you, I like to get all of my gifts done ahead of time because it seems like once Thanksgiving comes, time just goes so quickly. All right, let me put my pin in there to hold it. Okay, so let me open it up and show you. So we have all of the folds done and see how that's going to be so now you want to do the same exact thing to the other side so um yeah let me know what you're working on um let me know if there's um any type of projects you would like to see me do um i kind of got away from doing uh, my stampin up videos i do post my facebook lives because it just seems like um they don't seem to get a lot of people viewing those. Um, that's where my name actually came from. If you're wondering, well, she's always sewing. Why is she Stampin' Sue Creates? Well, that's why my whole um, YouTube channel started because I am a demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And I've been a demonstrator with them now for 20 years. And I started the whole YouTube channel with uh, my stamping to try to share what I love with people but it just seems like it's so popular now with the embroidery and um <clears throat> sorry about my frog in my throat but um you know I want to do videos of things that you know you you want to see so I am no means a, a seamstress so um, you may make bowl cozies and you may say that I'm doing it wrong and that's okay. Um, you can do how you do them and I will do how I do them. And that's the whole thing about crafting. Everybody has their own little niche, their own way of doing things. And I'd love to hear if you have a different way of doing it. Okay, so there we go with that. 
I'm going to move my pins aside. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to slide my machine back closer to me. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take all of these. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to sew from that edge to that edge. I'm going to take my pins out. And, um, and again, this does not have to be perfect. So... I'm not back stitching or nothing. Just going to do that. And trim my threads. Yeah, a machine that had like a thread trimmer would be wonderful. So if any of you um, are watching and you know your sewing machine company, I love to uh, demonstrate your sewing machine and uh, you know if you want to send it to me for free, that'd be even double yummy. <laughs> Okay, all right, so there we go with those. Now I'm gonna flip it open to the other ones. So, um, oops. Oh. I usually um, like to start in, so my foot's a little loose here, start in a little bit and not on the very edge. And I've seen people that they do a thing called a lead where they stick the a piece of fabric so that when you're starting off, um, it has fabric to start stitching on. But again, these are bowl cozies. These are not going to be, you know, in a fashion show or anything like that. So um, I am not perfect by any means, nor do I ever want to claim that I am. So I'm just me. And yes, I probably could take this video and speed this all up, but I don't do that either. I don't know, I don't edit. So I got all four of them done. See that? Quick, right? So without my chit chat, and you certainly can get these done a lot quicker. But, um, there we go. But these are fun. These are, these make great gifts. It doesn't have to be just at Christmas time. It could be any time. I'm just going to throw my threads there for now. But, um, you know, it'd be fun if it was um, someone's birthday and, you know, you wanted to make birthday ones or, uh-oh, or, um, you know, any holiday. So, all right, let's see. We got two more to go. Okay. Here we go. So my daughter was down last night um, with one of my grandsons. They came down just for a visit. And we had a great time. We ordered um, pizza and wings. And um, sometimes it's just nice. She, well, she's getting married next year. And um, I'm going to be embroidering... Um, napkins for the wedding but but the whole issue with the machine yeah I'm going to attempt on my older machine um I have the uh, program called in brilliance so see here we go with this so all we want to do now is and I'll get back to that story is clip this off because we don't need all that excess fabric clip those off so we have a, a program called in brilliance and I guess now that I'm having my downtime um, is a good time for me to uh, work on learning that and it's used with the machine embroidery it's a program that you're able to take um, designs and incorporate designs together because she uh, wants sunflowers on it and then she also wants the date and their name so by using that program oop, we have one more using that program I can combine the designs and um, go ahead and um, you know, have it so that the sunflowers in the center and the name and the dates are on the side and put that into a design. And then I'm going to attempt to do it on my PE770 uh, used machine that I bought from someone. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have our two bolt cozies. Now what you want to do, I'm going to push one inward. We're going to put right sides together. And if you have a directional fabric, you may want to pay attention to that. We're going to go in the corners. We're almost done. That's how quick this is. And I'm just going to do a pin 
in all the corners, bringing them together. So um, after I finish this video while it's uploading, I'm going to um, check the program out and uh, see how that works. And then hopefully if I get the design put together, I'm going to, uh, you put it on a USB plug for the embroidery machine. I'm going to put it in that older machine because the older machine doesn't really have editing features on it like my um, NQ1600. Okay, so now what I want to do, and again, the, if these are not perfectly aligned, no worries. We're going to align these up, and I'm going to pin here. And again, if, if you don't like to pin, you don't have to pin, you know. Um, I kind of do, just to kind of keep the fabrics together. If you like to use those little clips, I have them too, but... These are like right here on my desk because I've been using them. So um, that's going to be uh, the plan for this afternoon is to um, try to see if I can figure out the Embrilliance program. They have lots of YouTube videos on that. So being I have downtime from embroidering, you know, you have to make the best of it. Okay, so we're all pinned, right? And you see this is where that comes in handy where it's a little bit less because I'm going to be stitching like a quarter inch seam. You can use whatever inch seam you want, but I'm going to do a quarter inch, just catching the edge of that batting, um, and I don't have all that excess batting. All right, let's slide the sewing machine back in. Now, when I go to start, um, you want to leave a little space open because you're going to have to turn this right side out. So I'm going to start on an edge here and I'm gonna go around the corner, and then when I come up to um, up to there, that's where I'm going to stop right here. Okay, can you see that right there? Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna go um, and back, backspace, is that what you call it? <laughs> backspace, I don't know if you call it that. And, um, and I know you're not supposed to sew over pins, but well, Sometimes you have to. Okay, I'm coming here. Try to flip that down so you guys can watch. Just gonna go along the edge. I'm gonna take that pin out. Now a good thing you can do is you can, um, if you have a feature on your machine so it ends with the needle in the down position, that works great. And then it allows you to um, do the twists and turns. All right, so for those of you watching that are cringing every time I run a pin over, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to take my pin out. <laughs> oh, that one fell out. So, well, maybe another stitch or two. There we go. That's better. Okay, so I'm coming near the end. So. Now I'm going to lift my foot thingy back up. See how quick that is? Okay. Move this back again. Now what you want to do is come into your corners and be careful, don't cut where your stitching is. And just trim your corners. If you wanted to trim some of that excess fabric, by all means, you can. I'm okay with it because of the way that I did my batting. All right, let me find the opening. <laughs> where is it? Are you kidding me? Let me flip it over this way. The uh, thread just blends in so well. It's hard to find the opening. Okay, here's my opening. So now we want to turn this right side out. And take your time. That little section, if you leave open, that's plenty room to, um, to turn it. Alright, let's 
push that in there. Okay, pull it out. Oh, this is so cute. I may have to keep this one for myself. So then you want to find your corners. You can use your finger, you know, to find the corners. What I like to do is I have a bone folder, which I use for my paper crafting, and I'm going to use the tip of that. You notice how the tip is not sharp. I know some people use their scissors and that, but I, want, I don't want to ruin my the tip where I sew, sewed because sometimes if you push too hard, you'll make a hole. So I'm just going to use that bone folder, go to all four corners. Okay, I have one more right there. All right, so let's flatten it out. And look at how cute that is. All right. So we have one more step, and this is to do a final, there's a thread here, a final stitch all around to keep the whole cozy together. Bring the machine in. Okay, so I want to find where um, my opening was, and I'm just going to fold those in. It naturally goes. Again, you can pin that to uh, keep that together. I'm going to push bowl inside like this and I'm just going to stitch around and I'm going to start down here on the corner again I find my foot pedal and I'm just going to stitch around it's maybe about a quarter of an inch you know and take that pin out A little bulky so depending on your machine you might, might want to take your time seems like I'm stuck on something there put your needle down and lift your foot and you can pivot give it a little push there this is a lot of fabric that it's going through I'm going to just help it along if you find it struggling. Now I've seen some people where they only use one piece of batting in between the, the sandwich. And um, you know, you certainly can do that. So mine is super thick because I wanna make sure whoever is going to be using this is not gonna end up either their hands freezing or getting burnt by, um, I always think when you think of these, I always think of hot soup, like a nice bowl of hot chicken noodle soup. Doesn't that sound delish? I think so. Especially today. It's a kind of gloomy day here. And um, I made a uh, pot of soup last week. And um, I put it in little containers because it's just me. I'm going to double stitch there at the end. And I put it in all little containers. I let it cool, and then I put it in the freezer. So when I want a nice bowl of soup, it's all ready in individual servings and ready to go. Last Sunday, I did a uh, stew in the crock pot. And oh, it just went all day. My house smelled amazing, and it was wonderful. And I do the same thing with that. Put it in um, little bowls, let it cool, and put it in my freezer. So here we go. Where's my bowl? Right here. Look at how cute that is. So here's another idea. Make a bowl cozy. You can head to your Dollar Tree. Check to make sure, you know, the bowl is microwavable or, you know, whatever. Um, put Make a little bowl cozy. Have your little bowl. Maybe buy a packet. You know, they have those soup packets where you just add water. Put that in there. Wrap it in a cello. And what a great gift that would be to, um, you know, maybe you have grandparents or, um, you know, single people that don't really cook. What a great little gift that would be. And then if I want to, if that got dirty, you know, I'll just flip it the other way. Put your bowl in there and you're good to go. Aren't they super cute? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you appreciated this. I hope um, this helped you and maybe you'll be able to go. And look how perfect that ended up. The truck is like almost right at the center. Are you kidding me?
wow, I'm pretty good, aren't I? Um, I hope you give this a try. If you do, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know. If there's something else you want to see me do a video on, I'm all for that. So where are we at here? Oh, not too bad. 35 minutes. So you definitely could probably make one of these in 20 minutes easy without the chit chat. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to spend a little bit with me. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, go make some. All right, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you back here again real soon. Bye for now.